What do quilting and wood carving have in common? The answer, Fraser Smith. Fraser is a master wood carver who creates unbelievable quilts out of blocks of glued wood. He joins us today via Skype from St. Pete's Beach, Florida. Welcome to Sign with Nancy Fraser. Uh, hi, Nancy. Thanks for having me on. This is quite exciting. When I saw images of your quilt, which uh, of a quilt sculpture that you did, or wood carving, not sculpture, wood carving that you did, which our viewers can see right now, I thought, that's wood. And I'm just so impressed with this. Could you give us a little summary of how you started working in this medium? Uh, yeah, well, basically, I started as a kid, and my father ran a sawmill, and we always had wood around. Sure. And he also had some carving tools, and he liked to carve a little bit, and he got me carving. And then I went to college and uh, was taking sculpture classes. I was uh, thinking about being an architect, but took some sculpture classes, ended up working a lot with wood, and uh, basically decided after school that I didn't want to be an architect, and started just carving. And... Um, uh, the uh, subject matter I use is, is uh, it really started out with sort of things that we have that sure. we that we hold uh, keep in the back of the closet like uh, uh, an old jacket or uh, uh, you know something that we wear that mm -hmm. we have memories that we're connected with uh, and so that was the idea in the beginning and so I did coats and hats and sort of things that we'd say and then in about 1987 or 88, I was sort of sitting around thinking, well, what can I do that it sort of has that same feel, but uh, has a lot more chance for artistic expression and things like that. Okay. And I thought, well, why not a quilt? Because a mm -hmm. quilt is the sort of thing that we, we hang on to, and, and uh, no matter how threadbare it gets, we'll still fold it up and, and stick it away somewhere and keep it because we've used it. And you use basswood to create the your, your wood sculptures. Uh, yes, it's um, it's it's sort of it's sort of medium hard, medium soft. It's not it's mm -hmm. it's the uh, same stuff they use to make like popsicle sticks and stuff like that. Oh. But it is, so it it carves e easily, but it's also sort of homogenized. It doesn't really really look a lot like wood. Uh, once uh, once you've carved it and stained it and stuff like that, you got to get close to see the grain. And what we can't really appreciate it is that your pieces are large. You start off with a large piece of wood, and they're heavy. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. They uh, started out with you can't find a block of wood that's uh, either five feet wide or three and a half feet high. Uh, basically, I take uh, blocks that are four inches thick and cut them to the the length or width that I want, and then glue them up. Uh, a usual piece will have four blocks five blocks, uh, four inch of basswood, and it'll weigh, it'll start out around 170, 180 pounds. And then you go through the sculpturing process. Walk us through that, please. Well, uh, I've, I've got a couple of tools here. Uh -huh. This is what I start with. It's just an angle grinder with a, with a blade with three teeth on it. And it really removes a lot of wood fast. That's what I use to get the shape. Uh, so you've got the folds and the waves of mm -hmm. uh, the quilt hanging. I use them, I show them hanging from a rope because I like the idea of it sort of being a casual thing. Sure. And people walk into the room and think, well, why is this quilt here, first off? And then also, <laughs> why is it hanging over a rope? Sure. Well, there's that effect, but also it gives more of a three-dimensional quality in the whole thing. Right. So I'll use that tool uh, to, to get that shape of the folds. And then I take out this tool, which is a similar tool, but it's just sandpaper, and it, start, it smooths it down. Mm -hmm. At that point, I start drawing in uh, the, the pattern, and I design it on the computer, and I'll get the computer to print out the, the, the templates life size, just like a real quilter might do. Yeah, interesting. Uh, to, to, uh, and then I'll simply draw that pattern on the piece, and then I start carving with tools like these. Um, you know, they're, they're rotary mm -hmm. shaft grinding tools. And that's what I use to make all the stitches, the puckers, the, 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 the details, the surface detail that you find on a real quilt. And uh, then there's a whole lot of this, mm -hmm. the sandpaper. The sandpaper. And sure. you just sand and sand and sand and sand. And, um, and that's what really makes it look like cloth. 
they, they're Rather so than they're so amazing. The folds, the dimension, the texture. I'm blown away by your works of art, Fraser. Well, thank you. And thank you for sharing this with us. And we'll we'll look forward to seeing more of your artwork as you finish finish it and your process as you go along as we follow you on social media. Thank you for joining us and sharing this great idea. Well, thanks, Nancy, for having me. You're welcome. And thank.